intrusion detection systems and intrusion protection systems. So intrusion detection and prevention systems are used to recognize network attacks and respond appropriately. The incoming data to your network is analyzed for attacks using a different detection method, depending on how you configure your IDS or IPS. You can use either signature-based, policy-based, or anomaly-based detection. And we'll describe each of those in more detail shortly. <clears throat> As you see here, the image for Snort, it is probably one of the most popular IDS IPSs out there. It is a free open source software, so feel free to download it and play with it on your own. Knowledge of Snort and how to use it is not required for the exam, but if you're asked for an example of an IDS or an IPS, they may give you Snort as an example because it is the most popular. So IDSs versus IPSs. So IDSs are detection devices. IPSs are protection devices. So, or excuse me, prevention devices. So with IDS, it's a very passive device. It's going to operate in parallel to your network, and it's going to monitor the traffic, log it, and maybe even send alerts to your administrator. IPSs, on the other hand, are active devices. They are going to operate in line to your network, and they're going to monitor all traffic. They're going to send alerts. All that's the same as IDSs. But the difference is they can actually drop and block traffic based on rules and signatures. So in this example here, this I sensor that Dell has, which is their brand name for it, is an IPS. If data comes in that matches a signature, it can drop it and prevent it from getting to your network, much like a firewall would. Except that our rules can be extremely specific. It's not just based on IP. It's not just based on port, destination, or MAC address. This stuff can be very specific to looking for specific bytes of a file that are known malicious software, for example. Um, if you have an IDS, on the other hand, it will be off to the side of your network and get a copy of the traffic through something like a, a mirroring port on your switch. So this is an example of an IDS. You can see this counter threat appliance. That's an example of an IDS. And the IPS is that eye sensor that I spoke of. So if you have an IDS and an IPS, you have to worry about where you place it. As I said, if you have an active IPS, it's going to be deployed in line. Notice the IPS sensor between your firewall and your switch. As data comes in from the internet, it's going to go through your router, through your firewall, and then get stopped by that IPS before it gets into your network. So if it made it through your ACLs, hopefully your IPS will stop it as well. If you have an IDS, on the other hand, it's just going to be connected on the mirror port of your switch offline. Uh, excuse me, it's still online, but it is not in line. Uh, it is to the side of your network and getting a copy of all that for logging purposes. It will not stop traffic. So after the fact, you can go back and look at IDS and go, oh, I got hacked. Yay. With IPSs, it can hopefully prevent you from getting hacked. So it is an active device. IDS and IPS have different categories, as I've mentioned. We have signature-based, policy-based, and anomaly-based detection. Signatures are actually looking for a certain string of bytes. It's a certain pattern that it's looking for that triggers detection. For instance, if I'm sitting at the airport and every person who comes through is named John, we're going to pull out a line and search extra, that would be a signature-based detection. We're looking for people named John, right? If we look at policy-based, this is going to be based on a specific declaration of the security policy. For example, if we say no telnet is allowed, we're going to block all traffic that tries to go on telnet services, or port 23, much like a firewall. Anomaly-based, on the other hand, uses statistics to watch the traffic patterns and build a baseline. And then if it has a, something that doesn't match the baseline, it will flag on that. So for instance, we may have a baseline where we look at the people logging onto a network. And if people normally log on to the network between 9 and 5 because we're a traditional business and someone's trying to log on at 2.30 in the morning, we're going to flag on that. And so we want to look at that. Non-statistical anomalies is when the administrator actually defines the patterns or baseline. You have to be really careful with anomaly-based because, again, it may be legitimate traffic that somebody is coming in at 2.30 in the morning. Maybe your system administrator had to get some work done or you had some executive come in for a big report in the morning. Um, and this thing could stop them dead in their tracks because they're coming in at an anomalous time or anomalous behavior. So you got to be careful with those. Signature base is, uh, is usually what is used probably 90% of the time from what I've seen uh, because it is very exact, but you have to know what you're looking for in that case. Much like any virus, it's going to look for a signature based on no malicious patterns. Uh, we have a thing called HIPS and NIPS as well. So NIPS is a network-based intrusion protection system. HIPS is a host-based intrusion protection system. So we just talked about the general concepts of IPSs. But now we can actually look at where we install these. If we have it on our computer itself, on a server or a client, that is software-based. It's going to be a host-based system. So it's a HIPS. 
if we have a device like that network one that we talked about before that was in line, that would be a network device of protecting the network. It's a NIPS. Uh, NIPS and HIPS can both be on the same network as well. They can actually work together to give you more complete protection. The NIPS can prevent things like denial of service attacks or inbound network attacks, where the HIPS itself can focus on the protection of the applications from malware and other attacks that your user may be vulnerable to. So they're usually used in combination. As you can see here in the diagram, we have several NIPSs uh, protecting the network here. We have one protecting this group. Uh, we have an IDS over here, network IDS, logging all the information going to this particular set. We have a NIPS that will actually protect this area uh, as it's coming in from the internet. And we have a NIPS here protecting this area coming in from the internet. And then we have HIPS's host-based protection systems on our web, DNS, and email servers. And that is the intrusion detection and intrusion protection systems.